good morning from the farmer's garden. I'm one of the farmers and I'm out of breath from hoeing onions in the garden this morning. Uh, I am doing our Friday chore day. I've been making jelly so much at home that I have not been making it to the garden more than about once a week and so I have to cram all the work in on one day and I was just going to kind of show y'all how the onions are coming along uh, to be really honest. I'm not sure I have high hopes for our onions this year. Uh, last year we had some really great onions. Um, onions like fertilizer. They really like fertilizer. Um, they need really good rich soils and we have sand and sand clay <laughs> and so we don't have really rich soils. Um, we do add fertilizer before planting and so that helps but last year we also did a water soluble fertilizer and we would give them a shot of that every week or two and so that really helped our onions last year. We don't have a good source of water for that this year uh, with our new farm. We haven't been able to drill a well yet and so we don't really have a good way to do that. Uh, so they're missing the fertilizer. They got a really good dose when they went in but they're not getting it weekly like they were. Uh, onions also like really loose soil which is one thing that the sand is good for uh, because it can be really loose uh, and it's another thing that the sand is not good for because it can pack down really tight and so we got some heavy rains shortly after we planted and those really pack the sand down tight around the onions and that just keeps that bulb from being able to expand as well um, and you get kind of stunted onion bulbs so I'm going to turn it around and show you what we've got here, show you what I'm doing to hopefully work with what we've got and hopefully get a decent onion harvest this year. All right, so we put out over 300 onion sets this year uh, and then went back again later with some onions that we had started from seeds just to kind of experiment with those. Um, so I have done the middles of these rows with my stirrup hoe and what I'm doing is I'm just loosening the soil. So you can see, uh, well like this one is already kind of trying to poke up out of the ground here, but any of them that are way down deep are not getting that ability to expand like they need to because this is so hard. So what I need to do is go in with my stirrup hoe and break it back up so that it's uh, softer for those onions to be able to expand. I'm using a stirrup instead of a regular hoe because of the way this one works. I'm going to attempt to show you with one hand, but it won't be a very good demonstration. So this one has a blade on two sides, and my blade does need to be sharpened, but you work with what you got, and today this is what I got. So you're able to take this and just push it back and forth, and that loosens up the soil. And because you're pushing rather than chopping, it makes it a little easier to get close to those plants without actually cutting off the plant. It makes it somewhat harder on those clumps of grass. Um, but this works really good on smaller weeds and all of those things and then it breaks up that soil right close to those onions to hopefully let us get bigger bulbs. So I've done inside of this and I'm going to get between these two and then I'll get the outside of the red onions over there and the outside of the uh, yellow onions on that side. So. That's what we're doing today and hopefully that will allow us to get some bigger bulbs. I know a few of our onions are already starting to bolt. Uh, let me see if I can show you some of those. Uh, bolt just means that the flower is coming out. So for example, our radishes are also bolting. So we'll be pulling those today. They kind of lose uh, some flavor and get a little tougher after they bolt. Uh, let me see if I can find you a bolting onion. And the reason that it's important to notice this is because after they bolt, they don't get much more size on them. So you can see there's one with that flower starting to come. There's another one, some more right in there. So hopefully the rest of them that are not bolting will go ahead and make decent egg or decent onions. And uh, I just got a text about eggs that distracted me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll get decent onions. And we'll have those for sale in a few weeks. Yeah, a few weeks, three or four. So there we go. All right, almost done hoeing the onions. The main priority here is not getting the weeds out, but it does look so much better with the weeds out. 
so much better. I just love nice clean rows. All right, so I've got most of these done. You can see, hopefully you can see, this is one that has not been done yet. So these onions are in there pretty tight. The goal when we're done is to have these like loose tooth onions where they're kind of wiggly in there. Uh, that way we know that there's room for that bulb expansion. So hopefully these will now start to grow better and I'll get those others in a minute. The drawback to breaking up the ground like this, we need it for those bulbs to be able to develop, but we just broke up the top crust and that top crust was acting as a bit of a moisture barrier. We haven't had rain, but this still has some moisture in it because of that top crust that was on there. And because I've gone through and broken that up, now we're gonna see more evaporation. So we're really gonna need it to rain again. Um, in a dry year like this, it's kind of a, it, it's, you have to break it up to let the onions grow, but it's also kind of a downside as well because now we're allowing for more of that evaporation. So let me finish up this other row and then I'll let you see how it all looks nice and clean and pretty. All right, onions are done. This end down here was the hardest because this is where we came back in with the onions that we started from seed in the greenhouse. So most of these are uh, bunching onions and we will be selling them as green onions. So we may actually have a few of those this week. I'm gonna wait until Brandon gets here to decide. Um, but the rest of these, you can see it's all, well, except for these right between, the ones where I'm sitting, right? Um, we've gotten it broken up. Uh, in between there, it was a little harder to get in without tearing up the onions. I will say it smells really nice out here though. I've been hitting the leaves of the onions and so we got that nice oniony smell. So next step in the day is lunch break. And then we come out and we will start working on uh, pulling some radishes and some turnip greens and that sort of thing next. All right, so I'm back at it after uh, lunch break jam sandwiches of course and today I'm going to be pulling up the rest of our radishes and basically I'm just going to go through the row and pull them all regardless of size so most of them in that clump are on the small end we've got one uh, decent sized one one that's kind of eh, and the rest are little but I'm going to put them all in my basket and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take them out of the field and then sort through them and any of them that are too small to keep, uh, we will cull those out to a basket to go home and go to the goats. Um, free goat feed is always nice. And so that's what happens with those. And then they're not really wasted. The goats get to enjoy them and they're out of the field so we don't worry about them deciding to grow in the middle of our next crop. Uh, and the reason that I'm gonna go ahead and pull these, we have, uh, plenty of radishes already but radishes store well we're able to keep these in a cool dark place and keep them fresh and tasty for y'all for quite some time uh, without them getting massive out here that's actually on the small end compared to some of them that are out here uh, so we can get them all out of here and then next week we can put peppers in this place so that's the goal here for today is to just get all of these out of the way so that peppers can go in. So that's what I'll be doing for the next 30 minutes or so. All right, so I got all the white radishes picked. I'm going to take a break before I start on the colored radishes to kind of sort these. We find that most of our customers at the White House Market aren't crazy about the tops. So we're going to take the tops off of most of these. I'll leave a few with tops so that we will have a few that way um, but we're going to sort so like these that are small are going to go straight into our discard pile um, some of these it's hard to do this with one hand so some of these that are real pretty like this we'll leave the tops on and then the rest we're going to take the tops off and sort them and have those ready to be washed at home this evening. Okay, there's the radishes. 
most of that basket is just radishes and a couple of handfuls of the radishes with tops still on them and then a big old pile of radish tops for the goats so now i'm going to head back and pick uh i think i'll do spinach next for those of you who follow along for ideas for your own farm these are our favorite picking baskets uh, we got some of these at a local uh, like restaurant supply store that was going out of business and they had them super cheap back in 2019 and we really liked them so last year we ordered some more from uh, Webstrant Supply which is just an online West ooh, online restaurant supply store I don't need to talk as fast uh, but these work really good because uh, they don't tend to bruise the fruit too bad anything that's in there they're pretty smooth on the bottom and so it doesn't scar or bruise anything and they're easy to clean uh, you can even hose down produce while it's in this to get it clean so if you're looking for good picking baskets the grocery store uh, like shopping baskets are great for that so I'm gonna pick this row of spinach and then I think I'm gonna check beets and we've got turnips to check so that's what I'll be doing for the next little while, is just harvesting for market tomorrow. Okie doke, I've got a wagon load of harvest and two big crates of tops for the goats. So I've got turnip greens, the last of the kale, the rest of the kale we pulled for the goats. It was starting to get uh, kind of tough. Then we've got spinach, all the radishes, of course. So I think that's about it for the day. Next, we're going to uh, load all this up, take it home, and get everything washed and cleaned up and ready for market tomorrow. So there you go. That about wraps it up. We're going to take home our harvest and rinse, not wash. Y'all be sure to always wash your produce that you get from us. We rinse some of the sand off, but we don't wash it completely. So always wash your produce from us. And from anywhere honestly it grows in the dirt even if it says washed for the most part wash it again um so there you go we'll see y'all tomorrow at the market hope you enjoyed your visit to the farm today you'll be sure and like and subscribe to our youtube page and our facebook and come back when you can stay longer